making this video right after watching the Apple keynote that just happened right now and uh, looking at the iPhone's camera specs makes me feel a bit sad. Hey guys, it's Abdullah and in this video I wanted to talk to you about Pureview Tech. So you might have seen this before on Nokia devices. You'll find a Nokia with Pureview technology for its camera. And have you ever wondered what it actually means? This is what this video is trying to explain, as well as trying to explain why the Nokia 8.3 also has this branding. So let's get straight into it. But before we do that, I would really appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks. So what is PureView? It doesn't actually mean a very specific tech. It just means Nokia's very best imaging efforts. So this term started on the Nokia 808 PureView, which is this crazy experimental camera phone with a huge sensor. And if I had to sum up the technology on this phone, I would have to sum it up in two words oversampling and lossless zoom. So Nokia equipped the 808 PureView with a 41 megapixel sensor and they made the best out of this huge sensor. So every time you capture an image, the phone combined up to five pixels into one pixel and the result was a five megapixel image that was super pure. And because of this large sensor, what Nokia did was enabled you to actually zoom in on images without any loss of quality because you're pretty much cropping from the big sensor. So yeah, on the 808 PureView, the technology pretty much meant oversampling, which created crazy good images that actually still look good today if you know how to use it, and the lossless zoom tech. The second device to carry the PureView branding is actually the Lumia 920. I still remember that some people were disappointed that this phone had the PureView branding because it didn't have a crazy big sensor. But in this phone, the approach was completely different. You see, this is actually the first phone that has optical image stabilization built into the camera. So what does optical image stabilization mean? Or OIS for short. It just means that the lens is actually floating in order to combat movement. So what this essentially did is it reduced camera shake, allowing the sensor to stay open for a longer period of time. And this enabled it to capture more light. This completely changed the game for how capable a smartphone can be in low light situations. And in essence, this is the grandfather of low light imaging technology. The other huge advantage of using optical image stabilization is in video recording. Because the lens is essentially floating, when you walk it around, it combats all the camera shake. So you end up with smooth footage. These days, a lot of phones make full use of software stabilization, which actually crops a bit from the sensor in order to achieve the same result. However, the best stabilization is usually a combination of optical image stabilization and software. So this is why the Lumia 920 deserved the PureView branding. Eventually, the same sensor carried on to the Lumia 925. So it has almost the exact same tech. The only difference here is that this is the first phone that has a six lens camera element. But other than that, it worked almost identically to the Lumia 920. And then came the best of both worlds, the Lumia 1020. So this phone combined the best of the 808 PureView with a huge 41 megapixel sensor, as well as the combination of optical image stabilization from the Lumia 920. It also carried over the same oversampling tech and the lossless zoom technologies. And what's really impressive about this phone is that it put it in such a slim and compact package. So this phone easily fits into your pocket. After that, the phone that carried the branding was the Lumia 1520. So what this phone did was it sort of made the same technology possible on a much more slim hardware. So this phone had a 20 megapixel sensor that did oversampling, and it also had optical image stabilization. This phone was also one of the first phones that had advanced HDR options. So you could actually adjust how much HDR effect is in images after you've captured the image, which is crazy. Then came along the Lumia 930, which has almost identical tech to the Lumia 1520. And then came along the Lumia 950. This phone perfected the formula that was first started on the Lumia 1520 with much better algorithms for images and better low light performance. It was also the first phone with triple LED flash and it could allow you to adjust how much flash effect you have in images after they were captured. It looked like wizardry. 
Now moving on to modern day. And the first new Nokia phone to carry the PureView branding is the Nokia 9 PureView. So the reason this phone qualified to carry the PureView branding is that it had such a unique camera setup. So this phone has five identical 12 megapixel sensors, with the only difference being that some of them have a monochrome setup and some of them can capture color. And what this phone did is it combined the images captured with all these five sensors into one very detailed image. The result were images that looked very true to life. And the phone also enabled you to capture raw images with so much detail from all five sensors. In my opinion, the Nokia 9 PureView captures brilliant images, even today. And I don't think it deserved the same sort of flack it did for its camera. Unfortunately, the technology was flawed and there were way too many drawbacks for this phone to succeed. The biggest of them being how long it takes to process images after they're captured. And then there's also the reliability of the system. I noticed the moment the phone's battery life falls below 50%, it really struggled to power on all the five sensors and it resulted in the camera being unreliable at times. And now to answer the biggest question probably. Why does the Nokia 8.3 5G have the PureView branding? Nokia Mobile haven't exactly explained why. But based on my experience, I think it's all about its videography and video taking capabilities. So this is the first Nokia mobile device, well, modern Nokia mobile device, to have a big focus on video quality. The 8.3 comes with a dedicated video camera on the back, which is the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So Nokia made the most out of this 12 megapixel sensor for videos. So it gave it an action cam, for example, which produces very smooth looking footage. And then there is the advanced manual controls for the video. So you can adjust things such as the light sensitivity, the aperture, the focus distance, the white balance, and so on. Even the shutter speed while capturing the video can be set manually. Then there's the cinema mode, which allows you to capture cinematic video in a 21 by nine aspect ratio. So 21 by nine just gives you a wider aspect ratio, which looks really, really cool. In this mode, the phone also captures video in 24 frames per second, which mimics what you usually find in the cinema. But the feature that I'm most excited about is the existence of the H.264 format. What this essentially does is it captures video in a raw format, uncolor graded. So your video captures higher dynamic range and more details in the shadow. And it's made specifically for you to color grade it later on. So you can get the exact sort of colors and tone that you want for your video. Nokia also added a cinema editor mode built in. So you can actually color grade your footage on the go with these preset formats. You can even add fake flare if you want to your footage, if you wanna do that. This phone also has Ozo audio recording which just makes use of three microphones, as far as I know, in order to minimize noise and to capture very clear audio. So yeah, that's why this phone has the PureView branding. And I don't think it has anything to do with its main 64 megapixel sensor, even though so far from my testing, it seems pretty capable. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk to you about. I hope this video was informative as well as entertaining. If you liked this video, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.